Hello, it is I, Gide Larsen again from the uh, Academy, IBA, Erwerbs Academy Calling, um, your teacher in financial management. So today, uh, here is a, a video regarding how to, uh, regarding the balance sheet budget. So this is a how-to, not necessarily a description of what it is. So we need to pay attention, of course, to the financial position of the company. And that is exactly what we see in the balance sheet. Let me just move my camera here a little. All right. So the position of the, the financial position of the company is, of course, of great importance for our financial partners uh, and also for the, for the company owners and, and yeah, employees, etc. So therefore, we also need to take a look at the balance sheet uh, uh, when we are planning and and uh, making our budgets. Now, we have already talked about the budget for the income statement, budget for the liquidity. So now it's time to yeah wrap it up with the balance uh, sheet budget. Now, uh, I would like to do things in steps here. So, so shortly here in steps, uh, I have uh, made four steps here that we should look at. Uh, uh, very simplified here in this example. So step one is that we, if we already made the liquidity budget, uh, look in previous videos to look at that, uh, using the shift in financial position model or the indirect model for shifting assets, uh, then use that calculated values from the liquidity budgets for the different accounts where we tie up the capital. So the stock uh, inventory, the accounts for receive, the accounts receivable, the debtors, accounts payable, the creditors, and of course, the result of the liquidity budget, so liquidity at the end of the year. Step two is then to calculate the change in the fixed assets. So we have some uh, depreciations that we have budgeted in the income statement, and we might also, as a company, have planned new investments that we need to add to the value of this account. Then we uh, take a look at the long-term li uh, debt liabilities. Are we repaying some of the long-term debt? Uh, and and we just need to uh, reconciliate uh, the uh, the long-term debt liabilities as well. And then uh, at last, everything in the balance should be balanced. So we reconciliate the equity with retained earnings, proposed dividend, etc., getting the balance sheet balanced. Now, if you have not made the liquidity uh, budget uh, using the financial shift in financial position uh, method then the important calculations you need to calculate these different kinds of uh, accounts over here um, i have just mentioned them quickly here in in this uh, in this video as well so we need to find out what is the value of the stock the debtors creditors and calculations and to calculate the values of these accounts we use uh, what is known as turnover ratios so these are the reason we do that is they are directly dependent on the change in turnover and consumptions of materials. So no quick explanations regarding that, but we need some budget assumptions for uh, for these turnover ratios when we do these uh, calculations as well. So we use them, we calculate them, and then of course we make the budget for the new period. Just shortly and very quickly here, uh, if I can, yeah. Very quickly, these are the uh, calculations that I'm talking about. I would advise you, if you uh, feel a little lost here, to take a look in the book. In the appendix uh, two, you will find both definitions and calculations of um, these different accounts here. Also, definitions on how to calculate uh, the different turnover ratios, if you need that. Or you can look in previous videos to find that, all right? So, what we do, uh, just like when we t when we worked with the uh, income statement, the company will estimate uh, the financial position at the end of the current year. So let's say in October, they will then start to estimate where do we believe is going to be the end result, uh, looking at the financial position of the company. So we need to look at an estimated balance sheet. Uh, yeah, could be uh, the last day of the year, could also be another date of any any year, and then. We need our budget assumptions, calculate the value of the different accounts, and then, of course, make the budget for the upcoming period. So let's jump quickly into Excel. Let's see if we can keep it to one uh, specific, um, one specific, let me just look if I'm still calculating. Yes, I am, one, uh, one, one video this time. All right, 
So as you can see, the Excel sheet that I jumped into uh, is the exact same Excel sheet that I used for the, the, um, uh, for the liquidity uh, budget uh, in previous videos. So here we have the liquidity budget, still using the example of the book for, for financial management for the academy program by Lona Hansen and, and more um, authors. So, so you can follow uh, in the book while I go through the example here in Excel. All right. So here is the estimated balance sheet, which is the starting point for the whole, whole thing. So the estimated balance sheet in this example for 2018. So if you scroll a little down here, I have wrote the assumptions that we need uh, to find the new values of the, the new balance sheet for the budget 2019. So the calculated values from the liquidity budgets for stock debtors and uh, creditors and uh, liquidity. So basically what you do is you go in and then you go ahead and you find the new value. So let me just start with, I know that uh, we calculated in the, uh, sorry, in the balance, sorry, in the liquidity budget, we calculated the new value for raw materials, stock of raw materials. So what you do is you simply scroll up into your budget up here and say, well, ba -ba -ba, year end budget for stock of raw materials, 155,500. That's the new value. Do the same thing for the work in progress, equal sign, go up, get the value or type them if you would prefer to do that. So you already have calculated these different values so therefore i prefer to do it uh, in this order now let me just see finished products 190 yeah that, that was that. accounts receivable debtors let's get up there and pick up accounts receivable debtors here and the very last one the new value for liquid holdings for liquidity for cash is the liquidity at the end of the year that we did calculate the result of our uh, liquidity budget up here. All right. So the next step would be to calculate uh, the fixed assets. Okay. So what we know is that when we look into um, the estimated balance sheet, we can go up and we can find the values of these two accounts. So here I simply just pick up the value of the estimated balance sheet here for product, uh, production plan and inventory. Now, if you remember from our uh, liquidity budget, one of the assumptions was that the uh, company is investing in 25,000 or 250,000 uh, in new, um, uh, 2.5 million, never mind, in new facilities. Now, we are not told specifically if it's a plant, production plant or inventory. So right now I'm just making the assumption that it is for plant. It's not that uh, important here in this case, but you might be told which one of these accounts should have been uh, the one. So there I just sum up here. Now, if I would not have uh, depreciated uh, my fixed assets, this would have been uh, uh, my new bookkeeping value at the year end. But if you go up into the income statement, the budget, you can see that I have depreciated here the income statement budget, 119,400. So I go down and I can tell you, and this is by looking into the book, that those 119,400 are divided with uh, 104,000 a depreciation in production plant and 15,400 in inventory. So here you take the value you just calculated plus the investments minus the depreciation, so the decrease in the value to make sure they are correct. Now these are the new values you need to put in uh, to our budget um, for fixed assets. So let me just pick them up here. And, and of course, if you're a professional, 
uh, what you would do is, of course, you will make this all work out so that everything is connected so it changes automatically. But now we just do it like this. So let me just check the watch here down here. All right. So the next step I prefer to do is to find the retained earnings uh, that I need to put into my equity. Now, um, the retained earnings uh, from uh, my... Let me just see here. Yeah, my retained earnings from my accounts uh, in the estimated balance is the first value that I need. So transfer at start of year. And you can see here we have the account of retained earnings. So that's the value that you need. Now to this, actually what we need to, uh, to transfer, I haven't calculated this yet. So I might have taken uh, this the other way around, but I need to find this transfer to retained earnings before I can do that. So now I'm just going to pick up this value up here. And then I'm going to sum this. All right, so what I should have done here, I made not a mistake, it is not a mistake, but what I should have done is of course to calculate um, uh, the allocations of the profits before I was ready to know what I would uh, uh, retain the earnings. So we are told that the dividend uh, this is an assumption from the book that the board has decided to pay 24% of share capital uh, um, yeah, as dividend. So take 24% from the share capital. So if the company, of course, are able to, they will pay 125,000 of the profits uh, for share for dividend. So what is left? for transferred uh, to retained earnings. Let me just find that. Uh, where do we have you here? Profit of the year was 273,000. I need this number and then I subtract, there you are, the 120,000 that I want to, uh, to pay out in dividend. And I'm just to check it, I sum these two. So the, did you see that down here, now my number changed um, to that the retain, transfer from the retained earnings is 153,450. So now I have two new numbers that I want for my, uh, for my budget. So propose dividend, the 120,000. I can see I'm running out of time here. And the retained earnings, here transfer uh, for the year end. So what is left? So there are still a few accounts that we need to pay attention to. Let's take a look at the long-term debt. We are being told that they are making a repayment of 20,000 on long-term debt. So we need to subtract 100, no, not 100, but 20,000 into the long-term debt. So let's just do that manually here. So basically we just take all of the assumptions that is relevant for the different accounts that we need uh, so that we can make this whole uh, thing, um, of course, go into balance. And then the very last one, I believe, let me just check. We have the other short-term debt. We were told that the other short-term debt was 140,000. Now, and did I change? other short-term liabilities. These are all numbers we calculated in our, in our liquidity budget. So right now I'm just picking up numbers that we have already calculated. So now I, I accidentally put in the wrong number here. So quickly, let's change this and write 140,000. That was the short-term debt that we were looking at. And the very last step I need to do here is to sum up the short-term debt, making sure that my balance is in balance. That was the balance sheet. So uh, uh, these are the steps to follow. And uh, yeah, we will talk about it later in class. So thank you for following.